Oh my god, I wasn't recording. Are you kidding me? Well, unless I hit the button by accident, I have to start again. Oh my god. Hello there and welcome to today's video Now I've got something to tell you um, I had a qu quite a big disaster last night that I wasn't expecting to happen uh, I had just been out for a walk and I just got back home right and um, I just opened the front door I just went inside the front door just got inside shut the door behind us and all of a sudden all I could hear inside the house was noises like dead loud i thought holy shit so i'm, I'm, I'm like i immediately ran upstairs it, seemed, it was coming from upstairs and um i was going oh my god oh my god oh my god i thought i didn't know what was happening it sounded like the whole house was flooding before i even got to the stairs by the way there was water pouring like it was like a torrential downpour in the kitchen every part of the kitchen there was water coming from the ceiling the kitchen was full of water, it must have been like an inch to an inch and a half deep in the kitchen, the whole floor was covered. So I ran upstairs and uh, I went in the bathroom and I thought, um, I thought, oh, shit have I left a tap on or something? But I thought well I don't think I'd, I didn't think I had and plus I don't usually put the plug in so the chances of anything overflowing would be slim anyway even if I had left the tap on. But uh, what, what happened was I couldn't tell where the water was coming from. All I could see was the bathroom floor was just like deep with water, like an inch or so deep and it was just gushing out from somewhere. So I ran downstairs in a panic state <laughs> and um, basically I didn't, the first thing I did was I thought I'd better try and call the landlord. landlord. And um, the trouble was it was like nearly 11 o'clock at night. So I thought, I thought well I have to phone him because I, I my mean, whole house is going to be completely like flooded it was like a scene out of Poseidon or the Poseidon adventure or something so um, I phoned him and needless to say he didn't answer so I thought oh shit so I didn't know who to phone next because I didn't have any other numbers handy for water burst pipes or whatever emergency type thing and plus when you're panicked you just don't know what to you kind of think straight right uh, so I phoned 999 which of course is 666 upside down but never mind um, so I phoned them and the guy on the phone says do you want ambulance or police i says uh, uh, uh i'm not sure uh it's, i told him what was happening with the flood and the water gushing everywhere and the whole kitchen was flooded and the house was like you know it's like a deluge like a torrential downpour in the kitchen and everything in the bathroom and he and he kept saying do you want ambulance or police i says i'm not sure and he goes hold on he went off the phone he comes back he goes do you want ambulance or police? I says, like I say, I'm not sure. I, I'm just, just telling you what's happened. I didn't know, didn't know who to call. Anyway, he says, I'll put you through to the police. He was hopeless. Like he was like really like it was like talking to a robot basically. Anyway, he put us through to the police. A girl answered at the police station or wherever, and I told her the problem. And she says, don't don't worry, I'll send some people out to uh, make it safe. So I didn't know who was going to turn up, but about five five minutes or so later, I was knocking at the door. And it was a fire brigade. So the fire brigade arrived and um, they came in. I told them what's happening and they could see what's happening here, obviously. And uh, that's just where the tap was to turn the water supply off, the stop tap thing, whatever you call it. So I told them and they got that open and got into there and they turned the water off. But even after they turned the water off, it was still dripping from the ceiling like I don't know what all night long. And uh, eventually the landlord did call us back he was asleep apparently I woke him up and he uh, came round because the fire brigade asked me to tell him to come round so he had to anyway and he had a look and stuff and he, um, he basically um, you know he had a good look and see what was what and everything and then he he started ripping some of the tiles off the wall in the bathroom to try and get to the pipes because it was apparently a pipe underneath the toilet upstairs that had bust while I was out you know and um 
so he says that the pipe needs replaced basically and uh, and then we'll, we'll try to mop up uh, as much of the water as we could in the bathroom and in the kitchen but it was still like covered you know it was like a an impossible task but as I'm speaking now today uh, I left the windows open like most of the day here and um, it started to dry a little bit in little patches but because we'll mop most of it up and use towels and everything on the floor so yeah it was the right situation I wasn't expecting that to happen just when I went out to try and have a little walk you know I come back and that's happening bloody hell uh, like Twilight Zone Central <laughs> And anyway, he took some of the tiles off the wall and he discovered, right, he followed the pipe along behind the tiles. And there was another uh, stop tap, like to ice, so he could isolate uh, the water so it didn't get to the toilet where the pipe was bust. He, he turned a couple of taps, he tried one, the first one didn't work. And I was holding the bucket while he was downstairs with the, turn the water back on. And then water started spraying out, it was hitting us in the face and everything. It's like an episode of Perfect Strangers, you know, when they, when they had a burst pipe in their bathroom and, <laughs> and they were knocking holes through the walls and everything, trying to find the right pipe where the, the water was, was leaking from. That was hilarious. Um, anyway, he found this other tap and he turned it off. And then, so, because I was going to be in a situation where I might not be, uh, might not have been able to have water on for the rest of the night and possibly the rest of the day and the next day. And I might have had to turn the electricity off because the, the, the guy from the fire brigade said it's best if you turn your electrics off isolate your electrics and the water so I was, I was thinking oh shit so I'm gonna be sitting in the dark uh, doing nothing all night because I don't get to bed till God knows when and stuff but um <laughs> so anyway when the landlord did the thing with the pipe and everything he said well we don't really need to turn the water off now you can leave it on and you can use the downstairs toilet and stuff so that wasn't so bad that was a relief and I could leave the electric on as well, he said. As long as I don't switch the lights on in the kitchen. Because they got drenched. Basically, all the lights in the kitchen were soaked. There was water dripping off, off them and everything. So, yeah. So, he's still he's just waiting for um, he's a handy plumber guy. He's odd job man. To see when he's available. Because he, he can't get a hold of him at the minute. So, he can't fit the new pipe. He's got the new pipe to replace on the toilet. For the toilet where, where it bust. Uh, just needs to fit that and... Uh, patch everything back up again and everything I think and then it should be sorted hopefully <laughs> so there you go that was my disaster of the century and uh, it's almost sorted almost but not quite oh and something else I just walked all the way here to this location here right only to discover when I went to start this video that I'd forgot to put an SD card in the camera because <laughs> I've been having some trouble with my uh, previous camera one of my other cameras which uh, needs to go back because it's faulty big time the sound keeps going out of synchronization big time the half a mile out of sync but I contacted the eBay seller like three days ago he didn't answer so I sent him another email today and he answered because I asked him why he hadn't answered and he said uh, the 30 day uh, return window has closed he says if it was faulty you would have sent it back straight away he says you must have dropped it or something's happened within three months to it implying that I've caused something to happen to the camera that's caused the faults you see so he was very very cheeky you know what I mean so I wasn't impressed with that so I'm now thinking because I've had similar responses from someone else in the past on eBay and he was a fraud so I'm thinking this guy's probably a fraud as well to be honest because whenever a seller talks like that to you pointing fingers at you like it's your fault why the item is faulty and maintaining that there it isn't faulty because if it was you would have sent it straight back he says well how, how the hell does he know the thing is what happened was when I first started using the other camera the faulty one I didn't know it was faulty because I was mainly recording pointing forwards doing walking videos and stuff like my Newcastle one and stuff and I didn't know that the sound was going out of sync because I wasn't talking on camera you understand so it looked okay I thought it was okay until because you're not using the camera every single day and I swapped between different cameras and stuff and anyway I started recording myself with it and then still some of the videos were okay because it doesn't always go out of sync it only does it on certain like files you understand so 
I still thought it was okay. There was a few like things not right with it, but I thought maybe a firmware update would have solved that. But I haven't got uh, the firmware update for it yet, because you know the the problems I'm having are a bit too too severe. I didn't think it would fix the other ones. So I've been in, in touch with a company who make it as well. I'm still in touch with them. Um, so it looks like I can't send it back. But see, I tried different SD cards in it as well because I, I thought it might might have been a problem with one of my SD cards. So I had to do various different tests with other cards. And since it only does it on certain files, it, it takes a while before you find out the problem because you keep shooting and then some scenes are alright, you know, some files are alright, some videos. And then other ones are out of sync, you see. So it took us a few weeks to determine what was going on with it and stuff. Maybe I did leave it a bit, a bit too long. Because I still wasn't sure if it was faulty or it was something to do with the cards, you see, the SD cards. So anyway, he's now saying I can't send it back because because it's past the 30 day limit. Uh, the time you have to send the thing back, you know. So, yeah. So I'm not impressed. So I contacted eBay and it's like looking for a needle in the haystack. Trying trying to find out how you contact eBay directly. But I eventually found it. Because I keep changing it, I think. And um, so I contacted them. And they said, they said the same thing, oh well, since it's gone past so many days, you can't return it. It's not under their policy to return it for money back and stuff. So, <clears throat> they said, what we can do is, we can uh, have our backdoor team look at it, or something like that. Um, and, and they says they might be the refund you, but they have to approve it first. But if they don't approve it, I won't be getting a refund, and I'll be stuck with a useless piece of junk that doesn't work properly. Great, several hundred quid down the drain right there. So in case you're wondering where I am right now on this uh, video here, I am back at Moncton Hall in Heaven, next, right next to uh, Moncton Village. Well, one side of it is in Moncton Village, and the other side of it comes out on Campbell Park Road in Heaven, of course. Um, this is the place I made my video where I was uh, in the rain. Well, I've made a few videos here, but... Not loads, but a few. The one in the rain, I was over next to these uh, ambulances over here. Um, so I just noticed there is a security camera up this end. I didn't think there was. I didn't notice it in the dark, but there is one. And uh, there's that symbol you can see a bit on the light on the side of the ambulance. I pointed out that night in the rain, which is a bit. Uh, it's very similar to the symbol that's on the. Um, uh, the Baphomet, the Baphomet, have you ever seen the Baphomet, the statues of it and stuff? It's got like a similar symbol to that on it, very, very similar, similar, only it's got two snakes, I think, on the other one. Two snakes, one each side, that one's just got the one snake. Basically, I'm going to see it a bit closer. And another thing, I'm just testing out this new camera here, this is my brand new camera. So, and I haven't got my external microphone yet, it hasn't turned up, it's coming all the way from bloody China. I might as well be coming from Timbu Timbuk bloody too, for, for all intents and purposes, because it's taking bloody ages. So I thought I'll just test it without the microphone, because uh, I have tested it in the house briefly, but not too much. So I thought I'll test it outside as well, basically. So, um, as I've pointed out many times, this building here, which I was just in front of a minute ago around the front is supposed to be allegedly haunted but well there is stuff here because I recorded um, voices outside the building right next to the front doorway I was just a minute ago I've recorded voices there and here actually right next to the back of here also recorded voices just at this bit here and that building over there is called the White House even though the back part isn't white but the front is <laughs> maybe that is a new bit the build under the back of it I'm not sure but the lights are on on the side of there, I don't know why, because it's not even dark yet or anything. It's quite light, actually, the sun's still out, to some extent. The clouds keep going in front of it, though. So, but still, it's still pretty light right now. That is for sure. And I haven't had my dinner once again. I know I was mentioning that, but it's a fact. I haven't had my dinner. I thought I'll come out um, where the light's still here, like I did the other night, <coughs> and what have you. Uh, but the trouble is with these cameras, you know, if you don't have an external microphone it, uh, and it's a bit windy or a lot windy, it, uh, it's very difficult because the wind hits the microphone on the internal, I mean the internal microphone on the camera and it makes a lot of noise. You might be able to hear it 
probably be hear it on this video actually it uh, causes serious noise and you can hardly hear me speaking or whoever's making a video on other videos and stuff and um, so so it's always best to have an external microphone but the other problem with that is a lot of cameras don't have a microphone socket so you can't use an external microphone but it's so it's always really best if you're going to do vlogging and stuff a lot of vlogging to look for a camera first of all that has good image stabilization and also a microphone socket I always look at the reviews on YouTube and stuff and I, I've thoroughly checked every single type of these type of cameras that I'm using here and this is a gimbal camera it doesn't use electronic image stabilization I think it does have that on it as well I think on the other one like this does I haven't checked on this one but it might but it uses um, mechanical image stabilization just like a, a gimbal you know you can buy gimbals on their own you can either attach your phone to them to keep it steady so you have perfect uh, smooth uh, videos or you can get other types of gimbals where you can attach action cameras and stuff and of course if you go way back years ago in the film industry uh, they have something uh, what's known as a steady cam which is basically the same thing but these are a lot smaller than what they use on the films but I think these days they do have smaller ones as well but because back in the day they used to have to strap the steady cam onto the camera operator with straps like a harness and it was it, it was worked using like it was like used heavy weights it wasn't digital or anything it used like weights to sort of make it smooth the weights were like balanced to make the camera like rock like smoothly float along as you were using it it's clever how it works like but this one uses a, a like I say a gimbal that's uh, motorized and it's not electronic so it's really good you know but some some of these cameras vary you know some of them are really good in terms of stabilization some of them are like good but not as good as the other ones so it varies a bit you know you have to really look at the reviews you know watch the reviews on YouTube so here is the Moncton Hall building itself from the front uh, this is showing the entire frontage of the building here and I think it's a very nice building almost looks like some sort of a mansion it probably was some sort of a mansion house back in the day I don't know if it was purposely built for uh, medical purposes like for people with uh, I don't know whether mental problems or learning difficulties but I think these days I think it might still be used for people with learning difficulties and because uh, over here it says occupational therapy on this building here and I'm not sure what that one is over there to be honest with you but like I said I think I've said this before but I have been inside that building once so far now today in Luke's Lane estate which isn't too far from here there was a fairground just started today and it's uh, on the field behind um, the Jerovians rugby club and uh, Heaven Community Center but I missed it today because it finished at 8 o'clock I think it was on from like 4 o'clock till 8 o'clock in the evening so I've missed that but if I do go there it will be solely just to have a look and maybe make a little video there or something but I doubt I'll be to talk on camera because if the music they'll be playing I'll get copyrighted to death in fact my video might even lose the audio from YouTube might take the sound off that's what happens if you put uh, copyrighted music on too much to, to rip the sound off your video to take it off sometimes they just I don't know maybe take your video down or something I'm not sure but I wouldn't want to lose me risk losing the whole channel over some music at a fairground you know what I'm saying and uh, plus if I haven't got an external microphone you probably won't hear a damn word I'm saying anyway because the music will be so bloody loud you know what I'm saying so uh, yeah I'd be interested to check it out but I wouldn't be going on any of the rides like I've said before I've got a severe vertigo condition and I kind of go on anything like that so that's out of the question uh, plus I don't like to waste my money on stuff like that I like to have a look at places like that because they're interesting with all the bright colours and everything and all the hustle and bustle going on and plus that's only going to be there for like 3 or 4 days so if I do get it on video it'll be a record of it while it was there because in 4 days time it'll just be an empty field again do you know what I mean? so I, I capture a piece, piece of history there if I if I do video it because it'll be gone it'll just be some grass <laughs> nothing there anymore you know what I'm saying so it's worth there uh, it's worth there uh, going if I can get there because I've still got problems with me pain and all that at the minute so I can't guarantee I'll definitely get there and plus if it's raining 
I can't use these cameras here, I'd have to use a different one and they don't have external microphone facilities on them, they've got no socket for a microphone so that, that wouldn't be ideal, but it would still be doable, you know what I mean? so we'll see, but it might drown out my voice with the well, I, like I say, I probably wouldn't be to talk because there's too much music, I forgot yeah, I wouldn't be to do the talking, so I'd probably just, just show the place, you know unless I do a voiceover afterwards or something, I don't know we'll see anyway now apparently this area is a smoke free zone which is good good news for me because I, I'm allergic to cigarette smoke uh, so I've never smoked and I never will smoke and I can't stand being anywhere next to any cigarette smoke I can't stand being next to any smoke to be honest with you I was using them um, incense sticks you know for protection against uh, the, the spirit attack things I'm having um, and I had to stop using them because the first packet I got was okay. I think it was uh, based on the smell of uh, white sage essence or something. That one was okay. But I bought this other one. F forget what um, scent it was, the name of it. But um, basically, I'd used about three or four of them. And I was like getting seriously dizzy. And I could hardly stand up. I could hardly walk or sit straight or anything. And uh, But when I, 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 th I thought it might be them causing it. Because the smoke was pretty severe. And the smell was horrendous of them. So I stopped using the incense sticks altogether because when I stopped using them for a while the balanced dizziness thing wasn't as bad, I didn't get it as, as severe. I mean I still get all that but not in the same way as I was when I was inhaling the smoke and all that off them incense sticks. So I've stopped using them now because I'm a bit scared of using them again because of what was happening you know. Um, so I must be allergic to the smoke off them or at least a certain smell of certain ones you know what I'm saying. And when me mom and dad used to smoke I often used to be very ill with severe dizziness that I couldn't get out of bed, I couldn't walk, I couldn't sit up properly, I couldn't turn my head without the room spinning. And I often wonder, maybe it was because my mom and dad were smoking I was I was breathing it all in, you know. Because I used to be ill constantly back then. In fact, there was one time I spent exactly roughly one year inside of my bedroom and I never came out of my room for one year. Um, I used to have to crawl on my hands and knees to get to the bathroom often most of the time and even that was difficult because I couldn't balance it was terrible but um, yeah well most of that's behind us but I still have the vertigo problem but not haven't had uh, any more like that where I had to stay in the house for a year or something so yeah so anyway but I'm glad to see the signs here anyway but, but I am outside so it's not too bad anyway um, unless even if you're outside though if you're standing next to someone who's smoking and the wind's blowing in your face it's still horrendous you know what I'm saying so I just do not like smoke I just can't, I'm just, like I say I'm allergic so that's basically that so here we are at a sign that says beadwell entrance D and E in Elmville entrance B and C which is obviously that way and the other one's up there somewhere and uh, I don't know if these are like houses like what people in or, or there's something else I'm not even sure uh, I don't know anyone know because I haven't got a fog the foggiest to be honest with you so I don't think I'll be going in that bit just in case because I don't know I don't know if it's open or closed but I don't know the gates are open still so maybe it's still open I don't know oh, hang on there's a seat in there I will go in actually I just seen a seat I would do with a sit down actually my back's killing us so I'm gonna go in here and have a sit down on the seat. So here's the entrance to C Elmville. I didn't know this bit was here actually to be honest with you, the seat. And I don't know if these gates shut or not. But it's inside of a circle here I'm noticing. So there's a gate there. And then there's another gate where I just came in over here. And there's a camera facing us as well, a security camera. With a wide angle lens on. Or I bet it's not as good as this one that I'm using. <laughs> now there's there's will be way more fish eye shaped I should imagine. I'm guessing anyway. And I don't know what that blue thing is there. I don't have a look. It's got a picture of a looks like a bike on it, but I don't think it is a bike. That is it Velo or Velo Safe? Something like that. It's a safe. God, they keep money in this little garden thing. That's weird. So there's a nice bench here, which I shall be using in a minute unless I get turfed out of the place. <laughs> um, and there's another gate over here, oh, hang on. 
I didn't know this gate was here and there's a grey door over here which I don't think is for the public and a little silver vent next to it and it says plant room plant room? the hell? hope they're not growing cannabis in there or something <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't think it will be just uh and this uh, leads to the back of here obviously and over here is a mysterious white box inside of a fenced off square shaped thing I don't know where it is though but it's very mysterious, it must be some sort of generator or something uh, it says 95 something it looks like it's going to rain over here but it says PG, no FG Wilson Maybe it's their electric meter, I'm not sure. It's got a little window there with some flashing lights in it. I don't know. But, um, hmm. So here we are at the back of this building. And there's another gate which is locked by the looks of it. Or is it? I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it is. No, actually, it's not. There is a padlock on it though. But it's not locked, if you know what I mean, it's just up there. But I'm not going to go in there because I don't know, I don't think I meant to go. It doesn't say keep out, trespassers will be electrocuted, I mean prosecuted. Um, so I don't know. So I'm going to go around here and have a sit down on that rather nice park bench thing. Uh, it's a garden bench, it's not a park bench because it's not actually in a park, technically speaking. It's in the NHS sort of grounds here at Moncton Hall. So I'm now going to have a sit down before it starts to rain again because it looks like it might. I mean, there's still some sun out, but uh, it's looking a bit murky over here to say the least. Oh, I raised my voice when I sat down there. That was weird, wasn't it? I uh, went to sit down. I said to say the least. <laughs> Right then, since I am sitting here on this rather nice uh, bench seat thing that I didn't even know was here, I didn't even live far, far from this place and I've been in this, these grounds many times and this, this is the first time I've noticed this seat. Uh, I'm just wondering now if the gates in front of us actually get locked at a certain time unless I've, unless I've accidentally left them open. I don't know, I'll have to check that at some point when I'm uh, around this area again in the dark later on and see if these gates are open or closed because I often could do with a sit down when I'm walking around here because I'm in so much agony everywhere I go you know what I mean I'm in agony in the house I'm in agony in bed I'm in agony when I go outside and I'm certainly in agony when I'm shooting videos so anyway having said that I'm bloody starving so I'm gonna have this for now as a little snack which is my trusty Snickers bar here I don't eat them too often but I eat them when I need them, you know what I mean? I'm out here without dinner or anything, so I'm bloody hungry. So I'm going to eat this, and I'm going to bid you all farewell for now, once again. And uh, make sure you tune in next time when I next upload a video. And until then, I hope you have a good day or a good night, wherever you are right now. And don't forget to give us a little thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I'll be very grateful for that. And uh, I just say thank you very much for watching once again. And I guess I'll catch you all next time. So it's Tuddy bye for me. And uh, I'll see you next time. So ta for now. Bye now. ta -ra.